after class. Still got a couple minutes before everyone comes. I think I fixed up my mic audio from last week, so this will be pretty nice. And uh, we'll get started at around 7. So grab a snack, get to the restroom, get some water if you need, and we'll get started soon. Hello Molly, welcome to Hi. How are you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Pretty well, pretty well. Alright, welcome to this week's masterclass. Still got a couple minutes for everyone to join. Um, yeah, it's good that you're able to sit in and see what Ready to learn, are. coach? Yes, great, great, great. Hey Samson, welcome to this week's masterclass. Hello, what's up? Good to meet you, good to meet you. Alright, we still got a couple of minutes before the class begins. So if you need any time, go get a snack. We got some water and uh, the screen's already shown. So feel free to jump into the, uh, the screen sharing and at four minutes, we'll get started.
Okay, so we got a couple of minutes now. Uh, how's everyone's week's been? Molly, Samson, Zengis, you guys having a good week so far? Pretty good. Yeah, that'd be pretty good, man. Okay, Just good to hear. Going to school and, you know, the usual. Nice, nice. Hey, Renox, welcome, welcome. Zengis, you worked out too much, now everything hurts? Well, at least that's, it's a good, a good hurt. Like a good sore. And got to, got to Golden TFT, congrats. Awesome to hear. Don't, nice, nice, nice. Now you gotta set your eyes on Platinum, and then go, Diamond, and the next thing you know, you're Masters. Right before the new set, your MMR is good to go, and then you're gaining plenty of LP, starting June 8th. June 8th will be the release of set 7, with PvE being May 25th. So if you are an eager beaver, then definitely check out the PvE starting May 25th. And the actual set starts June 8th, and the climb will begin. Okay, so throughout the presentation, I'll be asking the... Uh, the group here, some questions, asking you to describe some scenarios, so feel free to be active, feel free to unmute your mic and either ask questions or answer questions, and uh, it's great if we get some discussion going, so feel free to do that. Don't be shy, we're all here to learn and here to have fun and discuss. And without further ado, let's get started. So hello everyone, uh, I'm Upset Max. I'm going to be teaching this week's masterclass on how to maximize early game economy. Uh, it's gonna be a one hour class, but we don't, we'll don't. normally end off around the 55 minute mark uh, for those who want to attend the VOD review or just for those to have a little break before the next activity. So if no one has any questions, we'll dive straight into it. All right, early game economy. Here's our table of contents for today. We're gonna go through a little introduction to economy we're going to be talking about stage one and stage two economy. So this is con this constitutes as early game. We're going to talk about how economy influences mid slash late game. We're going to do a little bit of practice, and then we're going to have an ending reflection plus Q and A. Okay, introduction to economy. So before I show the slide, uh, can anyone in the group here just briefly describe what is economy and why is it significant? Okay, I see, I see Zengi's typing. How much money you're making slash have? Okay, good. So that answers the first question. What is economy? It revolves around your money, how much you're making, and how much you have. Okay, and the significance important for rolling and, sh and leveling and units. Great, so you nailed both, great job. Um, so what is economy? Economy is the generation of gold. Okay, and you might be asking yourself, okay, so why is gold important in TFT? Well, gold directly translates to power, and power comes from upgrading units and leveling up. So, Zengis, you got it. So you're rolling and upgrading for your units, and you're leveling up, pumping your gold into levels. Okay, so we have multiple methods of generation, at least in the sets. Uh, we have passive income, we have interest, we have streaking, and we have augments and units. So we'll be going through each one, a little brief description of how these methods will help us generate gold and how to maximize them. So the first one, passive income. This is income that you get from the game round by round and you don't have to do anything for you to receive this money. So it begins at two gold on stage one, two. So as soon as you first load in, uh, carousel is stage one, one. So you picked your item, you go into game. After your first round, you will get two gold, okay? This occurs the same thing for one, three. You'll also get two gold. Okay, 1-4, you'll get 3 gold, 2-1, you'll get 4 gold, and then the second bullet here, it goes all the way up to 5 gold per round, starting on stage 2, round 2. So we have the first one here, as you can see, this first one is carousel, so carousel is stage 1, round 1, then stage 1, round 2, you'll get 2, and then stage three, stage 1, round 3 is also 2, and it slowly goes up to 3 gold, 4 gold, and then finally on stage 2-2, two, two, after that round, you'll get 5 gold from passive income. So this is a very consistent gold. You don't have to do anything to get this. Um, the only downfall is that five gold per round isn't enough to sustain your board. So you're gonna need some other types of income in order to maintain a good economy. So let's go straight into those. The next one is interest. 
So interest is where you earned one gold for every interval of 10 golds you have at the end of the round. And just like passive interest, this comes up to an, or sorry, passive uh, income. This goes to a maximum of five gold per round. And this is also consistent in the sense where as long as you have that specific interval of gold, you will 100% receive that gold. So on the right here, we have a picture of uh, interest. So zero to nine banked gold, you won't get any interests. 10 to 19, you'll have plus one. And it goes all the way up to 50 gold plus where you'll get plus five gold. So, so far we've talked about passive income and we've talked about interest and at a, as, as a maximum, you can get five from each. Okay, so, so far we could get a maximum of 10 gold, five from passive and five from interest if you have 50 gold plus. Okay, the next topic we're gonna be talking about is streaking. So streaking is inconsistent gold because you rely on maintaining your streak in order to receive this gold. <clears throat> so let's talk about win streaking first. So win streaking is a bonus one to three extra gold at the end of the round if you maintain your streak. With win streaking, you will also get plus one gold for every round won. And with win streaking, you normally cannot maintain maximum interest. This is because you're going to be using gold to either aggressively roll or aggressively level in order to maintain this win streak. Okay, uh, loose streaking. Same with win streaking, you will also get a bonus of one to three gold per round. However, you can normally maintain maximum interest and that is because you're not spending gold to roll until you spike. You're also not spending gold to level and you're passive leveling. So you might be asking yourself, what is passive leveling? Um, if you didn't attend the tempo class, you'll know, uh, or I guess if you didn't attend the tempo class, you wouldn't know. So passive leveling is when you level up on the most optimal intervals. So for example, stage three, round two, that's when you'll level to six, uh, stage four, two, you'll level to eight or stage four, five, you'll level eight to eight. So this is waiting for perfect intervals where you need a interval of four in order to go to the next level so you don't have to spend too much money in order to hit the perf to hit the next level so that's what passive leveling is and at the bottom here we have a little diagram or like picture of wind streaking it'll show uh if you're streaking two to three rounds you'll get plus one at the end of the round if you're streaking four you'll get plus two gold and if you're streaking five plus rounds you'll get plus three gold at the end of each round so so far we've talked about three concepts we talked about passive income We've talked about interest and we've talked about streaking. So we could get five from passive, five from interest and three from streaking. And you could even get plus one from winning. So, so far you could get a maximum of 14 gold per round. That's pretty good. All right, let's keep going. Last one is augments and unit slash items. So these are um, a little bit more, a little bit more less specific in the sense where you have multiple options and there's a ton of opportunity to get one of these. So let's start, we'll start with the augments first. So these will be economic augments, okay? And economic augments are generally only acceptable as first augments because your second and your third augment choices uh, are augment opportunities. So this will be on stage three, two, three, three, and on stage four, six. At that point, you need a combat augment or else your board won't be strong enough and you'll be taking too much damage. So economic augments normally only acceptable as a first augment. And these include such uh, augments such as rich get richer, calculated loss and treasure trove. So this will like jumpstart your economy right off the bat, uh, start of the game, you'll have a lot more money than everybody else. And you'll just go the economic route, make your way to level eight, unless you're doing a real comp, you'll be rich, money, great. The second option is units and items. So specific to the set, there are yordles. And yordles, what you can do is just play three yordles. You'll get one bonus yordle at the start of the next round and you can sell it for money. Gangplank, if he kills a unit, you get one gold. Tom Kench, if he eats a unit, depending on the unit's cost. So for example, if a Tom Kench eats a Darius, he will spit out one gold. If the Tom Kench eats a Jin, they will spit out four gold. And this only occurs if they're not carrying an item. And then the collector, which is an item. Oh, I put unit slash units. That's sorry, that's my bad. It should be unit slash items. Uh, the collector is an item that will have, I believe, a 60% chance of dropping one gold if the unit carrying the collector kills a unit. 
So these are augments and unit slash items, which will give you a bonus edge to really get a good economy. Okay, so we now talked about all these types of sources of income. During your early game, you need to figure out what your plan is. So early gold generation, ideally you have multiple sources of income. Passive income is not enough. Interest is pretty good, that will get you going. Streaking, even better if you can mix interest and streaking. And if you have an economic element, or you have yordles, or you have the collector, you're making a ton of money. So you need to really be able to analyze, okay, what are my potential ways to get money? How am I able to maintain it? What's my late game plan? But this is early gold generation. So normally on stage two one, your first combat round, you need to decide your source of income, okay? Optimally, you want to five win or five loss streak into Crux because streaking applies on monster rounds as well. And your goal is try to make 50 gold if possible while maintaining HP. Stage two, you will not take a lot of damage because it is early game. So you just want to be making as much gold as possible. Economy should be your number one priority. Okay, so that was a quick introduction into economy. Now we're going to move on to stage one economy. So stage one, this is carousel. You can't really do anything there. You just grab an item, but you have your minion drop. Minion drop scenarios. That's what all stage one is about. So no combat yet. All right, so there are two general drop scenarios that you will get from defeating minions. Okay, the first one is where you get two item components and six gold. So now you can look for potential win streak as your source of income. You can slam an item, you can level to four. You have three item components in total. So you can even like slam one and scrap one. You could also make 10 gold and not level at two one. So you just stay level three and you just work off of interest. Uh, but your plan, if you're dropped two items and six gold is to win streak, to have your passive income coming in and to have interest, okay? Second scenario is where you're only given one item and you're given six plus gold. Okay, so if you have a gold start, you need to try to make maximum interest as soon as possible and try to hit 50 gold as soon as possible. Okay, and your plan here should be to lose streak, uh, have passive income coming your way, have interest coming your way and yordles. And the reason why you want to try to lose streak if you're only given one item component and a gold start is because you're now down one item component compared to everybody else who got uh, the regular start. Okay, and the most common one is where you're given this one on the left, where you have two item components and six gold, uh, but on the off chance that you're only given one and a lot of gold, stick with the gold route, go economic, lose streak, get a ton of money, and try to spike later, okay? So these are the stage one minion drop scenarios. So let's look at a quick example here. Uh, it's just me on stage one, so let's play the clip. Uh, let's see if <clears throat> let's see what happens here. So uh, right off the bat, I'm standing in the middle of the board. Remember, if from last week's masterclass, if anyone uh, is here again, uh, I know Zhang was. You should be standing around the middle of the board during monster rounds. And the reasoning behind this is you can pick up orbs a lot quicker than if you're standing uh, like at your main base area. See, so I picked up an orb right away as opposed to having to run all the way from here to pick up the orb. And what this does is it gives you one, a couple, okay, not a couple, maybe like one extra second to open the orb and figure out what you wanna do. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm picking up the orb and if I'm given like five gold or if I'm giving five gold in the form of units, like a two cost, two cost, two cost, I can sell my board and make 10 gold. So this is the scenario I was talking about on the last slide where you're only given one item component and six plus gold. Then I would just try to lose streak with either yordles. I would play economic. I would have a lot of money going and I can try to spike later. So that's what I'm doing here. And you have to be quick and try to sell your board or sell your bench if you're given six plus gold here, just so you can make that 10 gold threshold. So this line of text can potentially sell bench units to make 10 and you always want to play your playable units on board. So if you see here on board, I have Alawi, Ezreal, and Ziggs. I had Caitlyn pair and yes, if I was going for win streak, I could go for a Caitlyn pair um, and play Caitlyn pair on bench and try to get a Caitlyn too. 
However, I don't know if I'm getting gold here or items because um, because I I was re I received an an item on stage one three, which means that on one four I can either get my another item component or just gold. Just so I'm leaving my options open and I might get units from this orb. So that's why I have Alawi still. See if I could get mer mercenary. I have Ezreal in case I want to play an innovator start. And I have Ziggs to see if I want to continue with Yordles. So that's stage one. It's pretty basic. You just try to make as much money if you're given the chance. And you're just trying to keep your options open until stage two. And stage two is going to be the kicker. Okay. So stage two economy, this is the big stage. Stage two one is where you need to decide your source of income, okay? It's your first combat round and you need to decide, okay, is my board available for streaking? Uh, should I just rely on interest for gold? What are my units looking like? Do I have yordles? Do I have mercenaries? Do I have strong two stars? Do I have absolutely nothing? Okay, so you need to decide your source of income. Um, if you have a strong board, which means you have slammable items, you can aggressively level and go for the win streak. If you have yordles, so and an economic augments and no slammable items, you want to go for the loose streak. And you want to aim for at least 20 to 30 gold going into Krugs. Okay, that's everybody's goal. If you can reach 20, then you're set for the mid game. All right, so we go into our first example here. That's stage two one analysis plus economic decision. So the first combat round has came. You're trying to decide, okay, do I want to go for interest? Uh, should I just stay level three and try to make 10 gold? Should I try to win streak? You analyze your board, decide your source of income, and you try to win streak if possible. So let's take a look at what this clip looks like. So this is me on stage two one. Uh, I'm trying to decide whether uh, what I'm going to do, whether I'm trying to win streak. I have two item components received from uh, minion round so that means I can slam an item and maybe scrap one I don't have scrap though and I decide to level and try to go for the win streak because I'm able to slam frozen heart on assassin and try to win some rounds <coughs> and that's exactly what I do uh, so now I've won uh, I'm going to, going to try to maintain my win streak for stage two and my sources of income are now passive income I don't have interest. Uh, I have win streak as my source of income, and I want a round so I get plus one gold. Okay, so this is what I mean by on stage one, you need to figure out what your plan is economically, and what you should be going for for the all of stage two. But these are ideal, right? Sometimes you have to be flexible because not everything goes your way. So remember before I said, okay, either five win streak, five loss streak, ideal. That doesn't always happen. So a common question comes up, what happens if you lose some, you win some? You have to be flexible in your economic strategy. So if your win streak is broken, let's say you won two rounds and then you lost, you can now prioritize interest over leveling. So you won two rounds, then you lost, okay? You can, you should prioritize making 20 gold over going or pre-leveling to level five. Because your streak is broken, now you have to rely on other sources of income, which should be interest if your streak is no longer a source of income. Vice versa. Uh, you can also lose interest so to secure your win streak. So you could aggressively level to five. You could even level to six if multiple people, even one person is contesting you for win streaking. So this means if you and like one other person or two other people are on a four win streak and there's one round left of stage five, you could pump to level six Get that extra edge, beat that win streaker, break their streak, and maintain yours. So these work vice, uh, these work hand in hand. Where you can sacrifice, um, you can sacrifice interest as your source of income to secure your win streak. And you can, if your win streak is broken, then you can rely on interest as your source of income. And once again, you want to try to streak into monster rounds. So this is just being flexible, working with the cards that you're dealt in order to make as much money as possible. Okay, so those are some uh, how to be flexible. Here are some common stage two economic scenarios. So optimal in the top left here, five win, five loss. You make money, you're good to go. Optimal, okay. Uh, if your win streak is broken, then you switch from streaking as your source of income and you can now focus on interest. If your lose streak is broken, 
Okay, now you want to try to win the next rounds until monster round. And if it's one loss, one loss, this is the most unfortunate scenario. Uh, you want to focus on interest as your source of income just because streaking is not an option. If you win, you want to try to play your strongest board. And if you lose, you should try to play a weaker board or like a Yordle's board to maintain your loss streak and try to make as much money as possible. So does anybody have any questions on what we've covered so far, whether it be from the introduction, the different types of economic scenarios, um, stage one or stage two economy? Okay, great. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, so specifically sure. for stage two, um, I usually, like unless I have a really good reason to, I usually, if I'm going for a win streak and I know I'm gonna be leveling to five anyways after carousel, if I have 14 or more, like between 14 and 20 gold uh, on two, three, I always pre-level to five. Um, do you agree with that? Or do you think that you should, uh, are there other scenarios where you wouldn't? Yeah, so so your scenario here is like, okay, you've won three. Okay, so it's two, two, one, two, two, and two, three, you've won. You're going to be leveling to five after two, four carousel anyway. So level five for two, five. And you're like, yeah, 14 gold. So you, will, you, won't, break in, you won't break interest by pre-leveling and then you'll get a level five shop. So well, I 100% agree. Um, that's playing high tempo, still trying to make your strongest board because maybe you can find some three cost units or even a two star three cost. And yeah, so I agree with that. Though I guess the only scenario where I wouldn't do that is if you were like closer to the 20 gold mark and your next matchups are the like the next top five, sorry, the next uh, like top four players like in the lobby and they all have like really strong boards that might beat you and then that would be like a maybe just because you're close to like the 20 interest mark and your streak might be broken anyway um but that gets into the, like the really nitty-gritty but generally if you're winning you've won three in a row you're planning on going level five you're not going to break interest then yeah you pre-level and you're correct yeah i would say the only thing i would consider is that if i had a lot of one cost pairs that would be more important so like i could still get one more level four shop to finish those pairs and then level to five. And that would be the only reason why I wouldn't pre-level at that gold. Yeah, I, I also yeah. agree with that. You also brought up a good point with the who you're facing next. Thanks. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Great question. Okay, so we went through a ton of theoretical information now. Let's get into some examples, okay? So uh, this first one here, it's going to be an example that I'll be explaining and not uh, not a practice example for, for you guys yet or you girls. Um, so here we go. So example here, this is a common stage two economy scenario. Okay, so here I'll explain what's gonna happen. You're, I'm initially win streaking, my streak is broken. So automatically I go from streak being my source of income to prioritizing interest. So let's take a look here, put it on highest quality. Oh, wow, nice, it went to full screen this time. Okay, so I'll play from the start. So let's take a look at my, my positioning here. So I've won. 2-1, okay, so I have one win under my belt, you can see here, uh, I'm level 4, I cannot make interest this round, okay, and I'm trying to win streak, so let's look at this fight here, okay, very unfortunate, right, I lose my streak by 1 HP, but regardless, my streak is broken, so now I am win 1, lose 1, and I don't have interest, so what I could do this next round on stage 2-3, right after it loads, on is I no longer play my strongest board and I could play Yordles instead. So before I'll just play my strongest board with what units I have. I've now lost, so I wanna continue my lose streak, okay? Uh, so I play Yordles instead and I make 10 gold. So now I'm relying on other sources of income where instead of streaking, win streaking being my source, I'm now doing Yordles as a source of income and I'm doing loose streaking as my source of income, and I'm doing interests as my source of income. So this is just an example of optimizing how much is of optimizing your income based on what you have. Okay, let's keep going here. All right, so now we've talked about an intro to economy. We've talked about stage one. We've talked about stage two, and now we're going to talk about how your early economy can influence your mid to late game. Okay. So here's how your early economy will translate to your mid to late game. Okay, so remember I said gold translate to power. 
because you use gold to roll and use gold to level. So your amount of gold generated and your health will influence your mid to late game plan. So there are typically four scenarios, right? Just because you have two factors that are um, that, that like that affect this. One factor being your gold amount, and your second factor being your health. So let's look at the first one here. If you're rich and healthy, so you have plenty of money, you have plenty of HP to spare, you can either do a late power spike on stage four or five, or you can go fast nine. And fast nine is where you're just sacrificing um, stage four and a bit of stage five in order to just make as money, much money as possible. And then you go level nine on stage five, two or five, five, and you roll down for a capped out board. Okay, so this is the best scenario. Um, this is if you get really lucky early game, everything works out, you have plenty of money, you have plenty of HP, you're good to go. You go level nine, you roll down for five cost units, you try to win the game. The second option is if you're rich, but you have a really unhealthy early game, okay? Uh, so if you're rich and you're unhealthy, what you can do is if your board is really, really in need of like leveling up or powering up, you could roll a bit on stage three, two. So this is the passive interval for going level six, where your, th your chance of seeing three cost units are increased. You can roll on stage three, two, look for a two cost, uh, a two star three cost, sit a bit and then roll again and spike on four, five. Okay, so or you can even early spike power on 4-2. But this first part here of leveling and rolling on stage 3-2 to find those three costs is super important if you're rich, but you're on healthy early game and your board is in desperate need of uh, stabilization. Your third option is if you're poor to average economically, but you're healthy, okay? So this means that you'll power spike on stage four round five right after that carousel You'll have more money this way than if you went fast eight on four two. You'll be able to level to eight, roll down, make a pretty good board, and you'll have HP to spare. So for those people who do go fast eight on four two, you'll probably lose to them. Four three, you'll also probably lose. But then four five, you'll have a bigger, higher cap than those who had already leveled, just because you have more gold to roll. And your last and final option, this is like the least ideal, is if you're poor to average economy, and you're unhealthy, uh, you have to try to stabilize mid game and then you can like try to roll down late on 5-1. So this is like, you have no money, you have no health, it's looking a little bit doomed. You can either stabilize mid game and then roll down later, or you could just sacrifice and then try to go for a 4-2 spike. But this is a very rough spot and uh, hopefully this doesn't happen. So now I talked about all four scenarios. Um, you might be thinking, I was like, oh, this is a lot to like take in. Um, so let's go over an example of each one. So the first one, you're rich and you're healthy early game, okay? So you have plenty of money, you have plenty of HP. Um, if you're not if you're not like incredibly rich, you could go for a stage four round five level eight roll down. Or if you are very rich, then you go fast nine. So let us take a look at this. Although is it, it is an example, I will still ask you guys what you think should happen here. So let's see if I can make it bigger. Okay, great. So let's take, uh, okay, I, want, I want this to go away. This one. All right, there we go. All right, let's take a look at this board here. Okay, so I fall into the category of rich plus healthy. Um, does anyone have an idea of what I should do here? Should I level to eight and roll down? I'll even show my board real quick. All right. Okay, so I hop in. Okay, so this is my board, okay? Do you think I should level to eight here and roll down for like four cost units and try to make a stronger board? Or should I try going fast nine? Uh, so if anyone in the group has an idea or something that they think um, is correct or even just like a discussion topic, um, now is your time, share it and we will decide and discuss what we think we should do here. Okay, so I see, I see Zangi's typing. I probably- Where do I see the typing? What's the, the oh, text chat? So in the like masterclass VC, if you go to like the title masterclass and there should be like a little text thing that says open chat. Oh, sure, then, okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so Zangi's, you initially say I'd probably level to eight and roll down. Uh, why do you think you should do this instead of going fast nine.
because you don't because you don't seem to have the strongest units right now. Okay, so that is correct. On this board, this board is illegal for four two. So what I mean by that is this board is not not at the average strength that a board should be at four two. Okay, <clears throat> so Zengis, you're saying probably at level to eight here. I'm very close to level eight and I'm rich. I could roll down like fifty gold, right? Um, I don't have the strongest unit, units right now. That is correct. My board is pretty weak. Um, since I have Woodland Charm, I get another Alistar. So I will maybe kill three units per round. Maybe four. That's a high roll. Okay. I also have Yordles in, so I'm making a lot of money as bonus money as well. Um, but I can go level eight. I can roll down. And here's the problem. Okay. Um, actually, before I, I go to that, I saw Molly Cookies. You gave a thumbs up on the level to eight and roll down. Uh, do you have like a, an explanation behind that as well or a discussion? Yeah, I'm just um, thinking about like what you could possibly hit at eight versus like going nine. So right now your, your carry is a Lucian one and your front line is an Alistar one. And level eight is like the optimal like odds to upgrade those units. So that's why I would roll at eight. Um, but yeah. Okay, so uh, very good points. You guys are correct, right? Both of you guys have given correct answers where yes, I can go level eight and I roll down. I have plenty of gold to roll down. I do not have the strongest units right now. If I go level eight and I roll down and make a really strong board, I could most likely keep my win streak. And Molly Cookies, you have correct answers as well. This board is weak. It's an Alistar one, it's a Lucian one. <clears throat> And level 8 would be an optimal time to hit Alistar 2, uh, Lucian 2. Here is the, not a problem, but the uh, another way to look at it though. So both of your guys, or both of your answers are correct. However, there is a more correct answer, which is go fast 9 here, and then just make a capped out board. Here's the reason why. So let's take a look at this, right? <clears throat> of level to 8, I can go roll down level like 50 gold here, okay? My items, I've, I'm have i probably going to hit Alistar too. Uh, I have a Chalice, and then I have a Jewel Gauntlet plus a Glove. So uh, the units I'll be looking for is like, okay, I have a Jewel Gauntlet, and then also have a Chalice. So I'm looking to play AP here, right? The four cost AP units are Ari, and that's about it. It's just Ari and Seraphine. So let's say I hit a two cost Ari, okay? And then I hit a two cost Seraphine. Okay, great, that's pretty good. Um, but that's about it. So what I'm trying to get at here is if you roll down on eight, you can make a capped board of, let's say from one to 10, you can make a cap board of like a 7.5, okay? You'll hit like Alistar 2, uh, we'll sell the twin shots, we'll get an Ari, we could even try to get in like uh, Braum, Zyra, maybe a Silco and a Seraphine. You know, classic roll down eight, make some two, two cost or two star four cost carries, will cap out at like a 7.5, maybe an eight. If I just go fast nine here, and okay, I'm at 100 gold, right? On stage four, if you get like eight owed, you'll take around like 17 to 18 damage, closer to like 17, I think. Um, so, and that's only if you get eight owed. This board right now, if I, I'll put in, I think I put in an extra unit. I put in something, I think maybe in the to try to kill an extra unit. I'm killing maybe like three units per round here, okay? So let's say I'm taking like 10 damage each round, and that's only if I lose, okay? Uh, for those others in my lobby who are rolling down on four five, I might, um, I'm actually at a pretty equal level to them on stage four two and four three just because they haven't spiked yet. Okay, uh, for those who did level two eight on four two and rolled down, I'm probably going to lose because they're all inning. Uh, but against other people, I have like pretty good chance to even beat them because Woodland Charm, I'll get like effectively two, three, maybe even four Alistar alts. Okay, four is a little ambitious. Maybe three, uh, just because it creates another copy. Um, and because of Twin Shots, I can maybe kill, like they can burst, like maybe two units. So uh, let's say I take 10 damage, okay? So 10, 10, 10, 10. I'm down at like 60 HP, okay? 5, 1, I take another 15. Okay, so I go from 50 to 35. Now at 35, just like in quick estimation. Um, so I'm at 35 HP now for like 5-2, okay? I need 80 gold to level to nine. 
I'll be making uh, five. Okay, I'll, I'll be making like 10 gold, 10 gold, 10 gold, 10 gold, 10 gold, 10 gold again. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll be making effectively 60 gold just from passive income and interest. Maybe even, even if I win this next round against someone who's waiting for level four or five to, or stage four or five to spike, I'll get another win streak round. So I'll be making like 63. If our boy Gangplank here kills a couple units, let's say like 65, and I have Yordles in, okay? What I'm trying to get at is now I'll be, this 52 at stage five two will now be closer to like, I said like by like 65-ish. And then I'll sell these units as well for replacements. I'm effectively rolling down like 40, 50 gold on level nine. So then instead of a Alistar 2, Ari, Seraphine board, I'll be now looking at like a Galio, Silco, Victor, Jinx, Blitz, Braum. I actually, I won't need Braum because I have Galio. Blitz, Jinx, Silco, Jin, Oriana board. And that will cap me at a 10. So both of your, both of your answers were correct. Yes. I don't have the strongest units right now. I do optimally want to keep my win streak, but by going fast nine, instead of going level eight and rolling down, I'm increasing my potential cap, my, my, my board cap from 7.5 to like eight to a potential 10. And I have the gold to support me. I have the HP to support me. And that's what I did. Um, maybe one day in the future, we'll do a VOD review of this game, but I end up going fast nine. I roll down and I get two cost five star units, uh, or sorry, five five cost two star units, and I get the most capped out board with Victor two, and I win the game. So that is the explanation behind this. I know that's a lot. Does anyone have any questions or like clarifications that they want to uh, address here? Do you think Victor? Just like this is not econ related, but do you think Victor with those items? I don't know what items you ended up getting this stage, but Victor with just JG and no mana gen item is a reliable like single carry for this comp. So yeah, I don't have any mana regeneration items right now, but that will affect like every AP carry. So even if I play Ari here, I still have like no mana regeneration items, or like Seraphine, I have no mana regeneration items. So it'll be either like these four cost units that won't cast a lot. Or it'll be like a five cost unit victor, which will cast like once with Silco, but will kill like the whole board because I have damage and not mana regeneration. Also, I'm supposed to get uh, 14 items in total or item components. So I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I should be gaining one from Carousel and three from Rafters. So hopefully I get a tier yet, or I get a tier. Um, I'm not sure if I start tier, but if I didn't, then I'll have a higher chance to natural the tier as well. So yeah, it is like, like items wise, it's not the best right now. We just have damage, but we don't have mana regeneration items, but that will like affect everybody, whether it's not, whether it's just a Victor or like an Ari with, which will need like five autos or like a Seraphine, which I don't know. Cause they've changed the mana like so many times, but she needs, she has like 140, I think. So I was like, yeah, mana generation is like a problem here, but it'll be like a problem across like all carries. That makes sense. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So uh, that's the scenario here. Very specific. Um, pretty interesting though. And every time I go full screen, it doesn't go back to here. So uh, that is the explanation behind rich plus healthy. Everybody is correct here, but there's just a more correct answer. Okay, so let's go to the next one. This is if you're rich and unhealthy. So now you have plenty of money, but you don't have a lot of HP to spare. Okay, so here's another scenario. I'll show my board. And okay, so what do you think we should do here if you're rich economically, but you're unhealthy HP wise and your board, this board will not kill like three units. This board is very weak. So what do you think we should do here? Okay. 
I think go eight and roll to stable. Yes, Samson, so you're correct. Um, compared to the last example, where we had 100 HP, 11 win streak, um, gold wise, we were around the same, where it's like we only need a, like 12 more to level to eight, and then we could roll down with like around 50. The difference here is we can't go level nine. Because let's say we sacrifice 60 HP, we're dead. Um, also, our board is a lot weaker than the last example, so we're not even killing a few units. And we don't have Yordles in. So that's another like six rounds or so of not like an additional like two, three income. So we can't go level nine. So Samson is right. We go level eight and you roll to a stable. So we leveled eight here. We're rolling down, we're looking for, now we're looking for the four cost carries. Um, looking, this game was rough, I'll be honest. Um, we were looking for like four cost carries, at least to try to stabilize the board. But essentially the difference here is we can't go level nine we can't go fast nine and roll down for a five cost board. We have to try to stabilize on four two and roll. So this is a rich plus unhealthy game. Okay. We go level eight, roll down on stage four two to try to maintain HP. All right, next example. So now it's flipped. We're poor to average, but we have a healthy early game. Okay. Uh, so stage four five, that's when we roll down. And we do this because you can generate a lot more gold than players who go level eight and all in on four two, okay? So there are two quote unquote sack rounds here. Uh, so this one I'll just talk about because it's already like so far into the clip. Um, four two is when most people go level eight, right? They go fast eight, level eight, and they roll down. Four three is a sack round across the board. And sack means uh, no rolling, it means n no like aggressive leveling or no complete leveling. You can still like pump gold into levels as long as you maintain 50 above, but 4-3 should be a sack round around the board because those who went to 4-2 have zero gold and those who want to level on 4-5 don't want to like level on 4-3 yet, unless they're going to die. That's the only exception. So we're gonna do two sack rounds, but this is okay because we're healthy. So this is an example, we're poor to average, but we have a lot of HP. So what we do here instead is we wait till 4-5 to roll down just because it's an optimal interval where you only need interval of 4 to level. So then you go level 8 and you roll down. Okay. So I, I won't show the full roll down here. This is just an example of what you can do. Um, yeah. So this is a 4-5 roll down because you're healthy but you're poor. And if you're healthy and you're poor, then you can afford to sacrifice HP for gold. But if you're rich and you're unhealthy, then you can sacrifice your gold for HP. So this is poor to average plus healthy early game. And then the last example is if you're poor to average and you're unhealthy, then I'm sorry, but your game is most likely doomed um, in the nicest way possible. And you're playing just for not eighth. So here, early game, absolutely rough. You have like 20 gold to roll. You have to go 4-2 here or else you're going to be like one life. And then uh, here you're kind of just hoping for not an eighth. So then you roll down, you try to stabilize, make your strongest board as possible. Uh, maybe you get bailed out by like a Kaisa, Victor, Jinx. Um, but if you're poor to average and you're unhealthy, you have to roll down on 4-2 to try to win some rounds and you're, you're playing for not eighth. Okay, so let's wrap everything up so far. We went through an introduction to economy. We talked about stage one economy drops. We talked about stage two economy plan. We talked about how the early game economy influences your mid to late game with four different scenarios. The two factors being your HP and your gold. Now let's go through some practice where I won't be explaining things. I'll be asking everyone here their opinion on the correct move. So let's go straight into it. Okay, first one here is just a picture. Um, it's a stage two one analysis plus economic decision. So analyze the board here and decide your source of income. Uh, so you can think, is this the right board to play? All right, um, what are my sources of income here? Um, if I win, what should I do? If I lose, what should I do? And even as a bonus, 
what items should you do? Because that will tie into if you're trying to win streak, right? Because if you're trying to win streak, you should slam your items. If you're trying to lose streak, you should not slam unless it's ideal. So what augment is this? This is Woodland Charm. So what Woodland Charm does, it's a prismatic. It takes the unit on your board with the highest HP and it makes a clone of them which has 1800 HP. Okay, so I'll even give you a little hint. Uh, Leona here being a three cost unit compared to these one and two costs, Leona will have the most HP. So it'll create a clone at the start of the next round. 1800 HP Leona, which is actually more than this Leona and it will fight alongside like your, your, your board and it'll do like abilities and everything. It's just like a duplication. So with all these taken in mind, uh, stage two one, look at the board, look at the units, look at the items, look at the augment, look at the traits, look at your gold, what should you do? What is happening? What's your plan? Let's hear it. Okay, so income right now would be Yordle's nothing else really. Yeah, so currently income, we just have passive income, it's 2-1, so we're only getting four gold after this round. Uh, we have Yordle's as one of our options, okay. That's good. Samson's typing too, maybe he has some ideas of what's going on or what can happen. I'd play for one streak Yordle's and slam Bramble or Sunfire on Leo, okay. Um, just because Molly might have some ideas, yeah, I won't comment anything. Okay, one land equals one streak, yes. All right, so um, everyone gave some really good input here. Hopefully, yours upgrade themselves. Yes. So uh, remember, at the very start, um, just like <laughs> just like in real life, you want to have multiple sources of income, right? Passive income is not enough. Passive plus interest is good. Passive plus interest plus win streak is good. Plus passive plus interest plus win streak plus yordles is even better. So, if you mix everything together, you'll be having like four sources of income, and that's great. So, um, wait, where, where did I read it? I guess like everybody's answer in total is the correct answer. So here, we have actually a really strong board because of Woodland Charm. Molly Cookie says Woodland Charm equals win streak. That is right. Uh, Woodland Charm is probably one of the strongest early game augments, just because the eighteen hundred copy of a unit, especially if it's a CC unit. That's why Alistar was so strong in the rich plus healthy example is really good because 1800 here, it's a lot more than what this actual first Leona is. So we'll have a really strong tanky front line, okay? And you can play win streak Yordle. So I would slam a Sunfire on Leo just because Bramble, you don't need any more tank. You already have your clone, uh, but Sunfire will provide more damage and healing reduction. And so you'll be winning you'll be uh, having Yordles as well for income. You can make interest in two rounds. Next round, you unfortunately can't. And you'll be getting win streak gold. You'll be winning rounds, getting that plus one gold. You'll be getting passive interest or passive gold. You'll be getting so many sources of income. So good job, everyone. Good analysis of this board. Oh, one more thing. This is the same game where it went into like the Alistar in the front and we were deciding whether or not to go uh, fast or to go fast nine or level eight roll down. So if you saw from from here until four two, I won all eleven rounds just off of this board, and that's how I was so rich, right? Because I was level eight fifty gold on four two, um, and that's this is how those boards happen. Because early game, you try to make as much money as possible, and I had like four different sources of income coming in. So then that's how I got from this board to 50 gold on 4-2, and then fast 9, win game. Okay, so scenario 2 here, let's take a look. So this is another stage 1-2-1 one, one analysis plus economic decision. Okay, so analyze the board, decide your source of income, um, look at the au augments, if the economic augments are good, and then talk about your game plan. So let's increase the quality. And I'll just leave it here because I want you to take a look at the uh, board here. And so take a first look at the augments. Okay, so we have back foot, makeshift armor, and tiny titans. Okay, so I'll give you a little hint. The economic augment here is tiny titans. 
although it doesn't give you actual like physical gold, uh, it gives you the opportunity to sacrifice HP for gold. So that's why it's still considered an economic augment or at least a utility one. So take a look at the back foot, makeshift armor, tiny titans. Okay, and then take a look at your board. So you have Alawi, you don't have Yordles yet, and you have Caitlyn. So Caitlyn doesn't really matter here, uh, but you have mercenary potential, you have Yordle potential. What do you think you should do here? Should you go for hopefully like, actually I won't give any ideas, but what do you think you should do here? Keep in mind of the different sources of income, of them being Yordles, streaking, interest, winning. So think of all the different sources of income. I'm gonna go close the window for five seconds. And uh, when I'm back, I'll ask everyone, what do you think you should do? We'll get some game plans going, some discussion, and then we'll talk about what I did, if we think it's the right answer, and we'll go from there. Okay, so my window has been closed. That's a yikes starts to be honest, it is. This is not a, this is not an ideal start, right? If you, the reason why, it's because uh, my drops from one, two, and one, three were both items, which means that I don't have a lot of gold, okay? I don't even have uh, a lot of units because I wasn't dropped anything yet, but this round, I'm guaranteed gold, okay? I'm guaranteed gold, but it's tough. Right? So th these are the common scenarios. You'll, you'll head into your game, and then you'll see these augments, and you'll just be like, oh, I don't know what to do now. Like, I have my items, okay? I have either Zizirot, Sunfire, or Titans. Um, so like decent early game items, but I don't know anything about my units. So do we have any ideas of wh what we can do here? Okay, Titans into the loose streak and try for Yordles maybe. Okay, so that is a very good option. You could go Titans. You don't have to level at all. You can just play Yordles, go for loose streak. You will not get item priority because you'll be plus 100 HP, um, but you'll be able to make a solid maybe like 20, 30 gold going into Krugs. Okay, I try not to greed three components, but I also hate slamming Sunfire's easy rot. If I don't have a strong board early, I just sack. Okay, so Molly thinks we should just sack as well. Um, actually, I like slamming Sunfire early, even if I, oh, but, oh, even if you don't have a strong board early. Oh, okay, I agree. So if you're just playing like, like three Yordles with like 10 gold on stage 2-1, I probably would not slam unless it's like a two-star poppy or something because the Sunfire will only like proc once and then you're not gonna kill anything anyway. Yeah, cause it's not gonna kill a unit, yeah, agreed. So if you just have like all like one star Yordles playing three and you have like 10 econ and no like two star, then I agree I would not slam. And then we'll get Samson's opinion and then we'll go over what I did and we'll see if it worked out or not. But right now, I will be honest, at this point there's a lot of variance cause it depends on whether or not you're going to get like like five gold and a remover, six gold, maybe like f Nico as well with like four or five gold because uh, the utility, like uh, they're not even items, like magnetic remover or like Nico, that takes away some of the gold from your six. So you'll get like maybe five gold plus a remover or even five gold plus a reforger or something like that. So there's a lot of variance going on right now. We don't even know what like our shop is and uh, it's, it's, this is a tough spot. So this is what happens when you get your first item drops or items. I agree. I agree to sack. Items are eh and no pairs. So here's our, here's my logic behind it. I think Tiny Titans is a good augment when you have a an extra source of income. Because if you think about it, okay, so Tiny Titans, it basically like, it allows you to get through stage five, take, basically taking zero HP, right? So you just sacrifice it, this, this, Augment here basically means sacrifice um, sacrifice an, an augment, a tier one augment, to not take any damage stage two. That's essentially what it means, okay? But it doesn't give you anything else. So I think Tiny Titans is only good if you have a 
source of income to pair with that. So if you have Yordles, yep, Tiny Titans. If you have Mercenaries, 100% Tiny Titans. However, if you have neither of these, I don't think Tiny Titans is good, just because then you're not even like sacrificing a combat augment for bonus income, and you're also not getting, uh, you're also not getting item carousel priority. You wait to see if you get dropped MF slash GP from creeps. Then, if you're fast at clicking, uh, <laughs> that's that's very risky. Because okay, I'll be honest, I've never left it to like. Actually, I'm pretty sure you have. I'm pretty sure the augment selection time closes and then the round starts. So I don't think you can do a. Yeah, I've never tried it either because if you get stuck to like five seconds, it automatically chooses an augment. And I'd prefer the game to not like randomly pick one for me. But anyway, uh, my reasoning is I do tiny titans if I have ever, if I ever have mercenaries or girls. But if I don't have either, I don't think it's a good idea. So let's say I took tiny titans here, right? I would have Poppy. I'd have Ziggs. So I can't even get. I I don't even have another source of income to go with me. So let's say I took tiny titans, right? And then it's like, yeah, I can hopefully hit Yordles, but I only have Ziggs here. So in my opinion, there's too much like variance and too much like risk for a potentially good economic scenario rather than like a stable uh, I can rather than like a stable combat augment where I can like maybe win some and then like lose some and still make a good amount of money and still have an augment that'll help me mid to late game. So to wrap things up, uh, my opinion here, Titan Titans is only good if you have another source of income to back up with it because you're delaying rounds, but you're making econ or you're making money. So that'll work out. Here, I don't have mercenaries and I don't have your old secured. And if I don't hit and I have Tiny Titans, then I'm really in a bad spot because now I'm not even getting item priority. I'm making no gold. I have no combat augments. We're in a rough spot. I completely agree with Backfoot with Bow Start, Sacrilege to get best in slot 80 items. Yes, so that was my logic too. I was like, okay, I'll just do Backfoot, okay? I'll uh, I'll see what my shop is. Um, I'm not sure why it keeps going to that, but I'll see what my shop is. Maybe I even get dropped pretty good units, but this is, this is a rather unfortunate start. Uh, I think I did okay this game. Maybe I was dropped like some tier three units are like three cost units from minions and at least i can play like an okay board with a back foot rather than like tiny tiny titans don't hit yordles don't hit mercenaries so that's my opinion on tiny titans okay everyone great great uh contribution great yeah great contribution to today's class uh everyone was very active I'd love to see it i'm now going to send out a uh master class feedback form I would love it if everyone could fill it out and give some feedback on how the class went. And um, yeah, thank you everyone for attending today. We talked about how to maximize your early game economy. And now hopefully in your next games, when you run into these scenarios, you ask yourself, okay, um, stage two one, I'm strong. Let's go for one streak, let's make some money. And then when stage four comes along, let's say stage four two, you're like, oh, okay, I'm really rich. I have tons of HP, can I make it to nine? Yes, I can. Okay, I'll have like 40 HP, but that's enough to make a capped out board and we'll 50 gold on level nine, we're chilling. Or you'll be like, oh, I'm really unhealthy, but I'm super rich. Okay, then you go fast eight. You level to eight on four two, you roll down, you stabilize. Or if you're like, oh, I'm really healthy, but I'm really poor. Then you wait till four five, then you roll down, like you level to eight, you roll down and you stabilize there. So there's plenty of scenarios in Teamfight Tactics, but as if you're able to identify your current spot and then make the correct decision based off of your gold and your HP, you'll be able to optimize your chances for becoming strong and hopefully top fouring. So thank you everyone for coming. If anyone has any more questions, we have a, I would say like one minute to bring those up. If not, then we'll end it off here. People can take a little bit of break before the VOD review coming up in three minutes. And uh, thank you. So I'm upset, Max. Thanks for coming. Hopefully we'll see you next week for the masterclass and have a great day.
Thank you, Samson. Thank you, Zangis. All right, RBM, it is your time to shine. I'll go. Okay, uh, you can hop into the VOD review. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll join in a little bit. I think Bach wants to have a meeting and then I'll join, check out the VOD review and then I could even help out with one of the games of the in-houses before I have to leave. Okay, because okay. I also, if you could tell me the people that sign up for the game, if there's anyone that's not in the call, that'd be good too because I don't have access to the air table. Okay, no problem. I'll send you that. Um, <laughs> but we'll we'll talk about that after your VOD review. All right, but Okay, good luck. Thank you, everyone. to see like what people like to open with are like weapon openers, etc. Uh item component openers. Uh Sensuko starts bow, uh, which is like pretty, you know, fine and standard for most of the set. Bow's been really OP, his sivers OP, and like Ash Sensuko really likes to play Ash as well. And Ash likes bow a lot because she can do RFC, which is fine. But I chose this game because we're gonna watch this game until four one. Uh so like, cause this is like a good example of like how to play like an early game, right? Um, cause he ends up win streaking like this whole game. So the first thing like you want to pay attention to is like the gold opener, right? Because like what's your like first drop, like stage one is like super, super important because you like, it dictates a lot of how your game is actually going to get played. Right? So the first decision he made that was like, um, something like a lot of like newer players might not like actually do is sell this Alawi. Uh, and you want to sell the Alawi just because, like, you don't want to make an Alawi 2 with a bow item on it. You know what I mean? Because then you're going to get stuck with a, like, a useless item on an Alawi 2 when it's going to be better on, like, any typical 2-star backline carry. Uh, so that's, like, a kind of thing you want to think about.